Hey, what's it going? It's Jim. What's it going? <laughs> hey, everybody, how's it going? It's Jim, and today I'm looking at the Volano Core over here. budget e-bike I picked up on Road Bike Outlet which is the I guess the representative or the dealer for Volano in the US and they're mostly I gotta show you this the dog over here she just laid down in the leaves anyway so Volano uh, they're mostly known for like fixie bikes and and stuff like that that's uh, you know and they're, they're kind of a little lower end honestly but you know, I saw this come up, and so the MSRP on this is $14.99 US. I got it on a sale. Right now it's listed for $599 US with free shipping to the US, uh, anywhere in the US. And when I picked it up, there was a $50 coupon, so I got it for $550. I did ask Volano if they were willing to give any discount code or anything for this video, and they really weren't. So. I'll put the link to that website if you're interested, but we're going to go through some of the specs. I'm going to ride it around. I'm going to do a range test and summarize a range test and then give you a conclusion of what I think. So let's jump into some of the specs. Right off, um, you, if you look on the website, um, it looks like it's kind of a brown color, but here in person, it's more of a, more of a purple. And I did have a couple issues with you can see down in here there's a frame there was some weird some paint issues um, I contacted road bike outlet and they gave me actually a credit back to uh, a $50 credit back um, and gave me some instructions on how to fix some of the paint issues so I was honestly really surprised being such a budget company and bike that they were so responsive and I mean like really I mean right away and when I ordered this bike, I think I got it in about four days um, after I ordered it. So it was also very quick. And I'll put a little sample boxing and assembly video that me and my son did uh, right right now. Handy dandy tool list. It says you only will need a 15 millimeter wrench, uh, both a flat and a Phillips screwdriver and some hex keys. So I, I'm trusting that, but I have some extra tools to side in case we need them. All right, so got the bike up in the bike stand. Um, side. They should have said you need some wire cutters because there's got these, of course, most of these bikes will have a really heavy duty zip ties on them. So that's uh, one thing I would suggest you also would need. Just make sure when you're cutting these uh, big zip ties that you don't accidentally cut, you know, wires. So, you want. Voila! A tube. Hey, and in tube number one, we have the battery, it looks like. It's got things so, yeah. on this side. It has this huge switch right here, which is kind of cool. Got a big button right up on top with some lights. Okay, can you set it down there under the... Oh, and oh man let's feel that i don't feel how tight that is so ooh, so this is something maybe you, you a lot of times get on a a lower end bike um like this like you can feel the bearings are ridiculously tight here in the headset so i'll probably have to open this up and uh it doesn't look like it doesn't look like something's quite right here in the head tube so i'll have to uh, work on that a little bit yeah. 
In general, I mean, this the head tube is really tight. Like, I can't even write it that way. I'm going to have to take this apart before even doing anything with this bike. Uh, grips aren't great. Um, I mean, for the money you're spending, didn't expect the world. We're going to charge up the battery. I'll adjust the head tube. And we'll do some, do some testing on it. But generally, I think an assembly, that was pretty easy. Didn't take but a few minutes. Right? Yeah. Nothing too bad. Nope. So, right. and uh, Volano does a great job shipping. They must ship a lot of bikes. So the back box was in good shape, had nice plastic reinforcements. Don't have anything bad to say about it. All right, so some of the general specs. This bike being um, kind of a simple, more of a simple layout, it only weighed 35 and a half pounds. And so it's got a smaller battery. It's a 36 volt, 10.4, amp hour battery so you got 374 watt hours um, but it only weighs 5.5 pounds and I'm going to put the key in here really quick and I'm just going to show you it's not the most it's not the best battery system honestly um, you just turn the key here and then that that's it does have a little this little handle built in here so it's, it's not too bad to carry. Getting it back in and out of this is a little bit, and it's not like, it's not, you know, it's not, it's not that nice. Um, but you know, it, it locks in pretty well, and is that locked in? A lot of this stuff is harder to do with one hand. Oh, there we go. And at least the key comes out, and it, and it seems to be pretty solid on there. Charging port is down here for charging on the bike, and there's enough room. It looks like it really wouldn't hit the crank arm if you, while you had it. And then uh, it's got this indicator on the top. I don't. Is it the battery's charged 100%? I don't honestly know. That when I rode it on, I had my son do it on the range test already. I couldn't really tell honestly what this battery indicator on here was telling me. <laughs> so, and I'm gonna flip the bike around here in a second. I'm just gonna go through the kind of the wheels so we got 700 C by 28 C aero rims uh, you know kind of a narrow tire it's a it's a, it's a general um, it's a general Chinese brand tire um, but though it is a hundred PSI tire again you got more of the fixie style with the so you can tighten the, the this is a belt drive bike so I'm going to show you that on the other side here in a second and of course these little these little fancy bits didn't come with it. I just had them in a box, so we put those on. And one thing I thought was pretty cool is it comes with caliper brakes. Um, I've done a lot of road bike riding in the past, and you know I like caliper brakes. They're really easy to adjust in my mind. Release lever, so you can come, you can, you can release some of the tension on the brakes. So when you're taking the wheel off, because the as how tight these are, so you just tighten them back down when you're ready to roll. Pretty simple. They're a really wide brake lever here. It's like more like a four finger brake lever. There are motor inhibitors on both sides. Um, it's very inexpensive grips. A lot of this is pretty cheap componentry. Um, and the, the reason this is cut off here is for when I was getting ready to do the range test, I was gonna put on these bar ends just to make it a little easier to have different hand positions. So I cut off the rubber grip. These rubber grips, uh, have a tendency to sl want to slide off. More of a BMX type stand, uh, stem on here. And um, you see the displays in kilometers. It, you cannot change it to miles. Um, so there's trip, odometer. It looks like it has 10 increment battery. One, yeah, 10 increments of battery on the left and then five levels and I need to check with that ticks down because it looks like it's 10, but it might actually only be five. And then on you got five levels of assist on the right. 
and I did some of the settings in so you can change in the setting menu you hit both the plus and minus together you can change the wheel size you can change the speed limit which I had all the way at the max which is 40 kilometers per hour which I don't know what the equivalent of miles per hour is off the top of my head and then the backlighting uh, one two or three and you just have to cycle through each one and that's really all you have to do in the menu hopefully you can see that on here off and on just hold it it does have walk mode if you hold minus and if you hold plus it would have if you had an integrated light it would turn it on so that might be possible to plumb in there just also want to point out there is you know it's not bad cable management here and there is internal routing kind of routes in and back out and you know it's a little bit hokey but it's not bad and of course looking at the battery rails you can see it's a little bit wobbly I had to tighten this up uh, when I got it I just noticed there's a almost like a testing like a like the a te a testing date written on uh, sharpie on the side of the battery I just noticed that kind of interesting Also to note this Volano frame being more, um, you know, fixie oriented, there's, there's still some other items on here for like running a disc brake. You know, you could run your cabling through here. So you could do some changes to this if you wanted. And then here is the uh, cadence sensor. Um, I'm nearly positive this is a six magnet sensor. I didn't pull it off. Um, just usually this size of sensor is a six magnet sensor. So not terribly high. You'll, I'll show as I ride that um, how much accuracy or how much precision you get with that. Um, 170 millimeter crank arms. A cage pedal, pretty cheap cage pedal. At first I thought it was, it's metal on the sides, but this is plastic in here. So not, not all that awesome. The one thing I wanted to show here is it's got a lower bottom bracket. So there's not a whole lot of pedal clearance between the ground if you're taking corners. And my son happened to hit um, as he was pedaling around the corner um, Just so I would think if this was actually a fixie it might not be the best fixie setup Because of that low pedal height. I'm able to just lean it on the other pedal, which is interesting Forgot to note when powering on display this is because it's a little bit older technology um, So if I paid the $1,500 for this I'd probably be disappointed, but for 550 I wasn't um, But you do have a two-step uh, on so you have to power it on here and then uh, yeah, have up, it's up on the display. Uh, the charger is just a two amp charger and it weighed 1.2 pounds, really, really quite standard. And actually you can see the evidence of that scraping pedal that I referred to earlier from a ride I went on with my son. You do have a disconnect here for power if you need to change the back wheel. And it's, you know, if it's more like fixed gear mechanism where you tighten it and you tighten the, you use this, these bolts to uh, get your chain your alignment and tightness and then you tighten down the outer bolt um, and it, of course as you're noticing here it's single speed belt drive I've never had a belt drive bike before so that was part of the reason I thought it'd be interesting so this says 80 teeth 80 whatever so it, it doesn't really correspond to a regular a regular chain drive setup um, but this is a 104 BCD bolt pattern from my measurement so you could if this failed, rather than having, because you have to have this to be able to get the belt out, um, you could just put on a normal chain system. And this looks, I'm not sure if this is a cassette or freewheel single speed gear, but it's definitely one of the two. Um, so that'd be pretty a pretty easy change. This rides like a really high geared single speed, uh, or fi you know, well not a fixie, but a really high geared single speed bike. Um, it's actually a Bafang uh, geared rear hub motor. It's a 250 watt rated. Uh, there, I, on their site, Volano, um, Volano says 220 watts, so it must be what the output is coming from the from the controller. Um, but right here, it's 250 watts. It is disc brake enabled or disc brake compatible. So for, for this really low price point, with a, oh, I gotta turn this way, sorry. Uh, for this really low price point, we're getting something that I think you could do a lot with, if you were, especially if you're a tinkerer, 
for much, not much more than you would spend on parts. Um, you could almost buy this and tear it apart and use it as a kit on something else if you wanted to. I'm just going to go through a few of the specs of the bike because there were none on Road Bike Outlet. I'll, there'll be a full list of specs down in the description, but I'm going to go through a few of them right now. So I measured, I like to measure things um, kind of like what I feel is useful. So I did the standover height from the ground to in front of the seat. And that is was 30 inches or uh, 75 and a half centimeters. I'm, I'm just gonna say it in inches and I'll put the conversion in, down in the description. So standover, 30 inches. The seat tube height here is 21.5 inches. And then what's kind of odd with this, you know, not that super high of a seat, seat tube height, the effective top tube, which is from your stem, kind of a straight line across, was 24 and a half inches. So it's pretty low standover, but it's got a lot of reach. So I'll probably end up putting a different handlebar on here that has a little bit of a uh, swept back. And that's kind of why I was using those bar ends to when I do a range test to give me some more hand positions. Uh, seat post clamp is 27.2 millimeters or seat post is 27.2. Um, the seat is quite cheap. This isn't the seat bracket that I actually, I put the seat from my other bike on here. Uh, this is just to show you the seat that comes with it. Not a comfortable seat, honestly. It, it's, it's a seat, but it's pretty bad. <laughs> All right, we're on the bike here. I'm in assist level one, and I'm gonna try to show you how the motor turns off and on, and how the different speed and different uh, assist levels works. And my son's on the pogo stick. Yes. Right. One thing you'll no maybe notice right away, or not, is that it's, because this is such a high geared bike, like I'm not getting any assist quite yet. Actually, I don't really feel anything at assist level. Now we're in the second. I get a little bit of assist there. Third. Just a very little. So at the fourth, at, at the fourth level, that's when I really start feeling it, um, and it, you know, it starts kicking in a decent amount. You can hear it there. And the bike is pretty stable, no hands. Got to give it some credit. And you see there, I'm, I'm barely, it's a very ginger pedaling pace. And you see what I've got there. All right, hopefully I can give you a little bit of idea how the motor sounds. So this is in the high gear. More here, just kind of going from a more or less a stop. We're in the highest assist level. I'm not seeing a whole lot of assist until I get to about level four. So I'm gonna kind of stay in this level five, um, just give you a little more idea how it's going from a, and I'm gonna basically try to pedal this more or less as hard as I can with one hand. So there is a little bit of a, as you, when you're coasting, that you kind of feel the pedals wanting to move slightly forward. It doesn't push your feet, but it's a little different. So this is about as fast as I would probably cruise without pretty, pretty, pretty easy effort, actually. Um, 
I think I could do this for a pretty good distance. acceleration wise the responsiveness isn't too bad really um, because it's so high geared it takes a little more pedaling force to get the motor to kick in and off but it's pretty quiet I think and it rides really well um, basic I like single speed bikes I've always kind of liked them so it, it kind of works for me but I'm gonna do a full range test going to work um, and that's about 26 miles round trip so we'll see if it makes it and I'll give you some stats from my son's uh, ride we did the other day that's also about that same distance. And wrap it up. Thanks. Yeah, I'm wrapping up the uh, result of my range test on the Volano Core. Uh, I did two range tests with this one. One with my son, and he's 110 pounds, and he got 26.8 miles. Um, his average speed was like 11 miles per hour, so a little bit slower. Um, I, at 175 pounds, I got 26 and a half miles. My average speed is about 13 miles per hour. And I was riding with, um, I was actually getting my heart rate up there a little bit. I was, I was riding fairly hard. Um, at the end of my son's range test, he still had 40 per, approximately 40% battery remaining, remaining. I still had about 25% battery remaining. So range is quite good on this. Um, and also at the same time, it took 0.3 kilowatt hours of power to recharge the battery. And so that's, that's in the neighborhood of three or four cents um, where I'm at, where it's 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And, and this to date is the most efficient electric anything I've ridden. Um, I got about 11, a little over 11 watt hours per mile. So, you know, the one thing I will say with this bike, because it's pretty, pretty high geared it's a high geared bike so if you're looking for a really low effort from a riding perspective um, it does take a fair amount of effort it doesn't have a throttle but it's really easy to adapt to it'd be a really good bike I think for beginners or maybe people with their first bike even though uh, as I talked before the re the reach is quite you can see what I did here on the bar ends to give it so I could uh, sit a little more comfortably of course, this is my saddle, and I put other pedals on here for the range test. <clears throat> and a couple things I wanted to point out that I thought of during the, when I was riding it. Um, there are no bottle brazons, uh, nor are there any rack brazons on here. Um, I might do a video showing ways to fit after, uh, racks to a bike like this, but it has such a ch short chain stay, it might be tough to get a rack on here with bags and without hitting your foot your heel on the back of the, on the bag because the bag might be like in this in this range that being said this style of bike kind of lends itself more to just wearing a backpack or like a messenger bag uh, a couple other things i did pick up oh and i didn't say it took me four and a half hours to recharge the battery at the end of the range test uh, one other thing i did find out as i was writing it and kind of playing with the display. There's a couple other features that I didn't see on the instructions that I wanted to point out real quick. So here we go. I was incorrect in my, even though it looks like there's 10 bars of battery indication, it's the same style as the assist levels where basically uh, go each time it goes down, there's actually two bars. So the, it doesn't have 10 bar, it's a five bar battery indicator. Um, but if you hold both of the powered slash mode and the up arrow, together you see you can get your average speed then your max speed um, and that's it there isn't any I looked more and I tried every button combination there doesn't be appear to be a way to put this into miles per hour to that note my range test on the display converting from kilometers per hour uh, kilometers to miles uh, this display was a little optimistic it said I covered 28 miles when my GPS backup was only 26 and a half miles. I'm not going to do a braking test on this just because 
it's a road bike with caliper brakes. They stop adequately well, especially for the speed this is and not having a throttle. Um, I, I'm, I'm confident that I'd be able to lock up these, with these, especially with these four finger levers, I'd be able to lock up these brakes quite well. Um, of course, the higher pressure narrow tires do affect the ride. It's not the smoothest thing in the world, but um, it, you know, it did a, it did a fine job. Uh, even though I said this, there are a couple um, fender attachment points down here behind the uh, cranks, and then right here too. So you you could you could put fenders. There's just not a uh, rack attachment points. Having the seat post suspension that I use did help a lot on the comfort uh, because these tires are, are so narrow and pretty high pressure. Um, the gearing, like I've said before, is low. I mean high, but it's a you know, for this price of five ninety nine U.S. dollars, and I got it for a slight discount. And I think they periodically have discount codes. I, I, even if you wanted to use it for parts, I think it's a pretty good bike. I mean, the components you get are decent. Of course, being 36 volt, it doesn't have a ton of power. And on my range test, I broke it into two legs. Sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit here. Um, and so about 13 miles each leg. Um, the, uh, the second leg felt like a lot more effort. So as you get about halfway into this battery, it's not giving you as much, much assist. But my average speed was only about a half a mile per hour different. So I felt like I was working a little harder, but um, bike still made up hills, the couple hills I have on the way. Uh, they're pretty small, but you know, it was pretty low on battery when I hit the one hill and didn't have too much problem. Um, but it really, I was pretty much riding it exclusively in assist level four or five. Assist levels one through three help out, but only to like around 10 miles per hour or less. Um, I really would never ride this in anything lower than assist level four, really. But hope this helps out if you're looking at this bike. You know, I don't know how much longer it's going to be available, so it should be a pretty good deal for anybody. Um, like I said early in the video, I didn't get any coupon codes or anything from Road Bike Outlet, but I'll put their website on there just in case you're interested. But thanks a lot for watching. I'll go one more time on the bike and show you it. Thanks a lot. the wave. Feel it.